actions on the battlefield. Many reasons for that. Uh, you know, as we talked about, it, it's something to be concerned about. It's something to pay attention to, and, and adjustments have to be made as, uh, as you lose districts because districts start representing key terrain as it uh, relates to security of the people. Ashraf Hadari is Afghanistan's ambassador in Sri Lanka. He joins us from Colombo. He has formerly serves as the Director General of Policy and Strategy of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ashraf is also a former Deputy Assistant National Security Advisor to the government in Kabul. Ashraf, welcome to the program. Everybody is asking the same question, of course, whether Afghanistan on its own can handle its security situation. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we are fully prepared with the continued support of the international community, especially uh, key allies such as the United States and ADUS and uh, NATO to continue defending Afghanistan against uh, um, uh, external aggression and uh, disguised as um, the, the terrorists that you see on the ground and as well as out of forces from a dozen over terrorist uh, networks that uh, um, infiltrate uh, or allowed to infiltrate into Afghanistan to uh, uh, fight uh, alongside the Taliban. Um, uh, which we've been uh, thwarting and recapturing district after district um, where we have uh, um, tactically uh, withdrawn. So we're not concerned. And uh, as we defend Afghanistan against external aggression, we are fully prepared to engage in peace talks. And we have continuously called upon the Taliban and uh, their regional state uh, uh, sponsor to uh, uh, and discontinue war and violence. Uh, uh, in Afghanistan and to uh, come back to the negotiation table to, uh, for uh, a sustainable political outcome that is going to be win-win. Sure. I mean, the fighting and the diplomacy are obviously related, but you could also separate the two because, you know, General Austin Miller might have a point here. When you look at the numbers, according to the Long War Journal, the Taliban now controls 157 out of Afghanistan's 407 districts. It's more than double that they had on May the 1st, and the journal also says since May the 1st, Afghanistan's army has only regained control of 12 districts. So if there's an advance by the Taliban, and you're saying that actually Afghanistan can take control, take care of its own security with the help of NATO and other allies, those troops on the ground are not going to be there for too much longer. We don't know exactly if September the 11th, the deadline will be stuck to by Joe Biden. OK, so let's say they stay there for the rest of the year, but there are only 5,000 Americans. The other NATO troops are leaving by September the 11th. What assistance do you expect to get? What drone technology, But if there are no troops on the ground, some sort of other assistance to fight the Taliban if they want to continue fighting? What the general said is uh, pure speculation, something that we wouldn't engage in, something that is uh, quite inappropriate. Uh, battles are happening and battles are always, you know, won and lost for different uh, reasons. Uh, what uh, we know is that uh, we are pushing uh, back, we are defeating the Taliban and uh, some districts were tactically withdrawing and others and we're recapturing uh, others. Uh, Rich recalled that uh, uh, the Taliban and uh, over a dozen other trust networks that operate under them are uh, not only destabilize Afghanistan, but the uh, region and the world uh, over. This is not just about Afghanistan. We, of course, uh, experienced uh, um, uh, the situation in Afghanistan under the Taliban back in the 1990s and the consequences and the spillover effects uh, in our region, including even in Turkey, where you are sitting. And as a result, uh, we expect uh, NATO to continue uh, their engagement in Afghanistan, whether directly or indirectly. And I think that's the message that we came away from uh, recently in Washington. We had a very uh, successful and productive visit by um, our president, President Ghani, and the chairman of the uh, Council on uh, Peace and Reconciliation, where they were, um, you know, promised and, and the, the Biden administration firmly committed to uh, continued security and military assistance on the one hand, as well as de development, humanitarian and economic on the uh, other. And also, risk recalled that um, our forces have been uh, defending Afghanistan and protecting Afghanistan since the end of the uh, transition uh, process, uh, uh, which uh, ended in uh, uh, 2014, provided that we continue uh, getting the enablers that we need. Um, the Afghan uh, forces are uh, strongly supported by the Afghan people, as we see from a popular uh, uprising and resistance across Afghanistan against uh, the uh, return and comeback of the Taliban, as much as they unfortunately enjoy uh, regional uh, support and from um, other elements from 
uh, you know, uh, outside uh, this region. But uh, we're determined uh, for our democracy to be further institutionalized for our gains of the past, uh, you know, 20 years, uh, and, and uh, support with uh, our allies, such as uh, Turkey, to be further consolidated and sustained. So, of course, Ashraf, the whole world wishes you well in that quest because your country has been at war for decades and decades. I mean, you know, we yeah. could even say that it all started with the Soviet invasion, right, and the formation of the Mujahideen. I just, if you could just be a little bit briefer in this last uh, answer, you talked about local actors, right? So there are tribal leaders in Afghanistan who are not members of the Taliban, but kind of support the Taliban, and that support has become obviously important. How do you create Afghan unity and make sure that that doesn't happen in the future? Well, there is a, a, a united front across uh, Afghanistan against the Taliban. It's unfortunate that the Taliban and, of course, uh, what their version of Islam is uh, imposed uh, on Afghanistan, much like uh, it was back in the 1990s. That's why we have uh, fought popular resistance, uh, uh, joining our forces against uh, uh, the Taliban, where, of course, the Taliban have gained uh, some support is simply because the ordinary people cannot do much anything but to support whoever is uh, there on the uh, ground. Uh, unfortunately, we're probably absent in some areas, and we're not able uh, to uh, provide the services and the protection that they uh, need. Uh, as a result, uh, of course, the people on the one hand, their heart is and mind are with the Afghan government, with everything that we have achieved in partnership with the international community. But uh, the reality is that the, the Taliban are there. They're brutal. They're, you know, uh, extorting them. They're, uh, you know, uh, killing them uh, on a daily basis, as we know, uh, planting bombs and mines mm -hmm. and uh, targeting, uh, you know, service delivery infrastructure across Afghanistan. So uh, the people cannot do much but to, uh, you know, at least uh, uh, remain neutral uh, in areas under the control of the Taliban. But that's why we appeal to the international community and our allies to stay the course, uh, to, help, you know, help us along this uh, journey towards uh, sustainable uh, peace, which we're, uh, you know, uh, seeking and which we are encouraging the Taliban and those who sponsor them to, you know, set aside war and violence and to come, you know, forward to negotiate a sustainable political settlement. That is win-win. Ashraf, thank you so much indeed for talking to us. Really appreciate it. That's Afghanistan's ambassador in Sri Lanka, Ashraf Haidari.